Hey guys, it's your best friend, your good sister, and your favorite girl boss, only Naomi, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I do what I want because I can. When I touch down, don't press me about checking in. I gotta convert the money from dollars to euros to yen. I'm concerned about building wealth. Hey, now we be being your friend. Hey, I spend. I'm excited today because today I'm gonna be talking about something that I never usually talk about publicly with a lot of people because I don't need no negativity and I don't really want y'all. But I do feel like talking about this will help somebody who may be considering what I'm doing, going through what I'm going through, or have been where I've been before. Now, before I start anything with this video, if you are not pro-surgery, you can click off the video. <laughs> if you're not pro-weight loss surgery, you can click off the video. If you are fatphobic, you can click off the video. <laughs> and if you're one of those weirdly entitled sports people, you can you can click off the video too. I'm gonna give y'all a second. Well, I fix my hair. Wait, let me fix my hair. Yes. Okay, so now that I've given everyone an opportunity who does not want to be here to not be here, I'm excited to tell you guys that I'm getting VSG surgery. Now let's talk about what that is, why I'm getting it, how I got there, what the hell's going on. So baby, <clears throat> VSG surgery is a weight loss surgery. Um, most times when people go to get uh, weight loss surgeries, it'll usually be gastric bypass. It's the one everyone normally talks about. Uh, or gastric um, lap band, which is not really that effective. But I'm getting something called gastric sleeve surgery, which is basically when they take your stomach and they, they cut off 80% of your stomach to help you lose weight. And it's not the end all be all. It's not even necessarily the easy way out. I've never had anyone say that to me, but I hear everyone say, so I'm just gonna echo that. It's not the freaking easy way out. However, your stomach can get as big as a liter of soda. And so what they do is they take a liter of stomach, cut it down into the size of a banana so that your food can digest well, so that you can be able to get the nutrients that you need, but also, continue to you know change your eating portions lose that weight get back off that back neck and start a new lifestyle and that's why i'm getting it let's talk about why how i got here okay so i'm 22 years old i'm fairly young to be getting this kind of surgery uh, or to even be going on this kind of journey however Weight has been such an issue in my life for such a long time. Starting around the elementary age, I don't want to get into all the specifics, but around elementary age, I never really had a problem with me. Um, I've always been like a gorgeous girl, a gorgeous woman, like you know. But my weight began to become an issue when like I started to get bullied and stuff. So then I was like, oh my God, what the, ooh. you know, I got real self-conscious. Um, and so growing up, you know, elementary school, there was bullying in the middle school, you know, it was still the same thing. And then I began to experience like these different things that you wouldn't think would affect a kid, like shopping, like in grown women sections to find clothes that would fit, never fitting anything to then, you know, really getting into high school and you know, joining sports because I was a soccer basketball girl and I played basketball all of high school and went from my heaviest weight uh, at maybe 13, I was 225, to in my senior year of high school, I was 165. And <laughs> I'm gonna put some pictures in because I was really cute, I was really snatched, it was getting all of that. And um, when I got into college, being through this, and when I got to college, um, you know, some things happened, your girl was sad, you know, we were going through some things. I'll talk a little bit about that in my other videos. Needless to say, I did not be back. Fast. Freshman 15 came and snatched me back. Then in my seat, then in my sophomore year, I was, cause I think after my senior year of high school, I went from 160 to 200 and I was like, okay, that's fine. Cause I had a little shape. And then I went from 200 to 25 and I was like, that's too much. And then um, 
end of my sophomore year, beginning of my junior year. I was doing study abroad. I went from 225 to 250 by the end of 2018. I was 205. You're already seeing a pattern of my weight going up and down, so just follow me on that pattern. I went from 250 to 205 from 20 <laughs> and in 2019, I went from 205 back to 250 by the end of that year. And now we're here in 2020. Still a gorgeous woman with face advantage. And I reached my heaviest weight oh my God, of 275, guys. Mm, I know. And I'm a tall girl. Let me add that in. I'm a tall girl and I'm a curvy girl. Still got a little mass on my syndrome, but it's okay because it's, you know. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm 5'9", 275 pounds, or was 275 pounds, and I hit a point in this year where I was like, before I allow myself to be any kind of 300 anything, we're going to lose the weight. Now, at the top of this year, once I noticed I was 250 and I was back where I was in 2018, I said, this is too much. Something ain't right in my spirit. It's not sitting right with me. And so I began to try different things to figure out why my body gains weight the way that it does and really just get a focus on what I can eat, what I cannot eat, eating for my blood type. Should I be plant-based? Should I be pescatarian? Should I go vegan? Should I do raw veganism, keto? Like I tried all different kinds of things. Um, and in between March and January, before, you know, the world with the shreds, um, I went from 250 to 230 easily. Um, my body was in ketosis, but I was doing a plant-based diet. I don't know how it worked. Don't ask me because I don't know. I was in my doctor's office in and out. We were talking about it. We were really trying to find a solution. And at that time, I was dead set on getting a Brazilian butt lift, honey. Because remember when I said I had no acetal syndrome? That's a real thing. You can have hips, you can have shape, you have curve, but back there, ha! stay up here looking at my face. This is you don't have to worry about nothing back there, okay? Um, I was dead set on getting a BBL. And, you know, and then after a BBL, I was like, well, maybe I should get a tummy tuck because then I'd have a flat stomach. Or then it was like, well, then maybe I should just do liposuction because liposuction would just take the fat out. But, oh, wait, no, BBL, because then they could take the fat out, but I think I don't have. So then, child, listen, I'm pro-surgery. I am. And, you know, I'm pro-surgery when it's necessary. Like, if you are at a, if you have had your children and your skin is not as elastic as it used to be and it can't snap back, honey, and you want to get that flat stomach, get that, get that extra skin cut off if that is what you want to do. Not that it's for anybody, but it's uncomfortable and you, you want to <laughs> get it back clean. Go do that. If... If you, you know, if you are shaped like a box of cereal, let's be real, because sometimes we say that things about ourselves and we look at ourselves and we're like, I'm gonna go um, if you are shaped like that and you don't necessarily like it, I don't see anything wrong getting the real fat taken out of your real body and putting your real behind. It's real. It's you. I'm not really a type of person that is messing with the face. I just, you're going too far. However, if it's your prerogative, you like it, I love it. Don't become a new person. Just, you catch my drift. Um, but I kept hearing people, I keep hearing like, this is not a weight loss surgery. Here, um, I was like, well, what are weight loss surgeries? And that is how I found out about this. The reason why I chose this path is because I felt like at 22, I need to see what my body looks like. Real body girl under 275. Um, cause I could get a BBL and have a fat and nothing changed about the way that I gain weight and lose weight and still not know how to eat the right way or how to properly give my body the nutrition that it needs. I could get liposuction and gain the weight right back. I can get a tummy tuck and gain the weight right back and have an ugly scar and I scar easy. I don't have no time for that. So when push came to shove, when it all boiled down, it was like, before I spend another year trying to lose weight, I'm actually gonna do it. And it's gonna be healthy, it's gonna be the right way, it's gonna be medically supervised. I'm gonna get my little banana belly and everything is gonna be all right. 
because it's not a it's not a walk in the park it's not like you can just go to the doctor and be like hey i want to get this song and they'd be like okay um they are keeping track of you because they want to make sure that this is something that you actually want to do so instead of just saying oh okay she wants to lose weight let's, let's give her you know they want to make sure that you're serious about changing your lifestyle because after your bmi is above like 35 with some issues or 40 they consider you disease and i don't necessarily like that propaganda but if that's what the doctors say honey that's what the doctors say your bmi is over 50 it could take like three months because you're in dire need um but yeah if your bmi is over 35 or 40 most times you'll have a three month or six month situation where you'll have to go see di uh, dietitians nutritionists fitness specialists psychiatrists and everything because they want to make sure that you understand what the issue is and why you have gotten to where you are and then you need to understand why you've gotten to where you are you know and me being the way that i am i was the person starting out who was like i don't have their problems and i had to gut check myself on being judgmental because you know i'll hear stories of people who are like you know you know i just i be drinking soda and i be eating honey buns and i you know when i get sad I blah, 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 blah. and i was like i don't gonna have those problems but I had to look at how I eat and there may, I had to acknowledge that there may be an emotional relationship with food there. I like to go out. I like to eat at restaurants. I like to be, you know what I'm saying? In the scene, I eat good. I eat out very much often and it's showing up. <laughs> There's some other things going on. I don't really eat a lot of snacks. I don't really eat a lot of junk food, but I love me some ice cream, you know what I'm saying? Like there's some there's some different things that contribute to where I'm at, especially on the most on the emotional eating side of things. So, you know, I had to own it and um really be comfortable with saying I'm going to change my lifestyle. So for me, like as soon as I had my first meeting with my doctor, they're like watching me. Like they're like, you know, I have to lose a certain amount of weight before my surgery and it's not necessarily about losing weight but i just can't gain no weight and so you don't have to worry about that part but i am on a journey now to lose a certain amount of weight my goal right now is to go from 275 to 245 45. my goal weight is 160 max 145 at the least because i don't i'm not a fan of being like you know like I don't want to be like I have a big head I'm tall like I can't really give the girls scary Mary I have to give it shapes if you want to follow me on Instagram I'm gonna put it over here somewhere if you want to follow me on Twitter I'm gonna put it right here somewhere and if you want to um, just keep up with me, keep up with me. <laughs> bye guys